what was X's death like for that like for you and and just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know for saying? sure. Um, you know, I think that that's probably one of the most like sacred and like a little traumatizing points in my life. But I'm just like like I said earlier, I try to take the good from it. And I mean, like near the end, it was kind of like, and this is the most important part that I stress about him is like change is very important and allowing people to change is like the most important thing. Like, yeah, change is cool and everyone can appreciate change when like they like it. But like, if you can allow a person to change and like better themselves, I think that's like more important than like your own personal like of a change. You get what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. I do. So, so like, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it was something that like, it just taught me so much where I'm understanding a person from where they are at their lowest, getting some success, seeing like the ego grow and take over and then watching the ego, the bad part of it start to like know that it it's not welcome anymore and like that's what he was doing and it was just crazy to see because i try to change a lot about myself like every day there's just things i'm trying to change and i'm trying to work on and that's what i appreciate most about him was he was so like head first about his shit to when he felt something it was like i'm gonna do it if i don't do it i'm a bitch and i'm not a bitch last thing i am is a bitch that was like his mindset so he's like okay i really believe that there's more than just like what I was set up in my life with. Like could imagine what it really was like for him growing up and like his situations and like just knowing that he was a person that needed attention, more attention. Maybe he felt like he didn't get a lot as a kid and stuff like that. So I don't know for him, it, for, for like the whole concept of the end part was like, I got to see him become a better person. And like, this is one of my most precious moments. And I, cause I love you, I will say it. But there was this point, <clears throat> the helping hand challenge. It was like a show that he had. It was like his challenge that he had on Instagram where he was giving back to the community. And it was like, all right, we're gonna throw a show in Broward and pull up to that shit. We're donating money and giving shit away. So, um, and it was for, basically all that was like, inspired by um, the, uh, what was it, the Stone Douglas um, shooting in Parkland. So he was like, I want to give back to that community because yeah, yeah. I'm around there now. Now I live here. Like, that's technically, like, in the same area, but Parkland's, like, a very, very rich area. And, like, he now has moved there, that part of, like, Broward and that at this point. And he's just like, man, I got to do something good for the community. Like, I got to change. I have to, like, it's more than just saying that you change. You have to actually physically do things to make your mind and your body like really do the change. It's more than just saying it. So he started to do these things and there was this point at the show, but right before the show where he's like, come to my house. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna pull up. I'm like, obviously I'm excited. I'm like, we haven't done a show since the last show that we got canceled and we had threw a show in Tampa and it like the fans destroyed the whole street and the vent like literally, his I8 pulled up and they were like scratching it because they were all clawing at it. Like the show got, it was done. They We fucked it up. Right. Police, it was just bad. We went to Tampa for no reason. We literally just did nothing. <laughs> and it was crazy. So, yeah, so. so Not the worst place. So like we're in Broward now, home right. city, right? And I pull up to his house and I'm like, yo man, like I just want to let you know, like I, all the stuff I'm seeing, like is awesome. I'm proud of you. And um, he's just getting a haircut. And it's like so beautiful. Like I wish I could paint it like, his house is super, super beautiful. Like it's a, it's insane. And like, he's sitting in this huge living room with like family around the house and stuff. And like, this is good. Like he didn't have family around all the time. So it's like really nice to see like, you know, like his grandma, like his mom and everyone around. And he's just like getting a haircut, talking to me, we're having a conversation. And then he gets up and then he like kind of moves weird and I like flinch. <laughs> and he's like, he looks at me and he's like, I'm, I'm not like that anymore. I hope you know that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to just grab you and like, or like punch you in the arm or like any of those things. Like, he's like, I, I want to show you something. So like, he walks me outside and he's just like, and the, we're in at the front of his house at this point. And he's like, like, look at all this stuff. Like, look at this. Like, this is my home. Like, honestly, it kind of makes me like, it makes me emotional thinking about it. Cause it was so beautiful. But he's just like, this is my home, man. Like, 
like, I have a garden. Like, I like look at the grass. Like, <laughs> look at my trees. He's like, like, this is it now. Like, I'm happy. Like, and um, we did have a personal conversation. At the time, I had like introduced him a long time ago, actually, to my friend who was a girl who is now his baby mother and the mother to his child and all that. And um, he was like asking me some stuff about her. And it's just some person. I don't even have to share that. It's whatever. But it was just like, you know, I don't know. I, I, at that moment, I was just like really seeing it in person. Like I was like, he was more soft spoken. Like he was allowing me to speak to him and him actually be understanding to like, sometimes before it was like, his mind was going at a thousand so fast that he was just like, yeah, he's listening to what you're saying. But in his mind is like, I have my end goal. I'm running at a thousand miles per hour at it. You're just like adding something to it, you know? So like at, at this point that I'm talking about now, it was like, it was just beautiful. And like, there was so much love and like we did the show. And before there was points where like, if I ever fucked up, he was like, in, on stage he'd be like Gabe what the fuck and I'm like I'm sorry like you you don't ever give me a chance to, to, to not fuck up because like he wouldn't give me a set list he would expect me to like know it off of like him rapping a few words off the song like I'd just have to scroll and type it and find it and play it right away there was like cues that he would give me where it would be like s small finger cues and small things to stop the show or continue the song I'm just like learning all of this because like I'm not the most experienced DJ at this point I'm young as fuck and like and I'm not good. I was not really good at that point. <laughs> the, the truth about it was I like my personality stood out a lot and like I'm outspoken a lot and like I, I'm good on the mic. I, that was like my main point was like I'm good on talking at the yeah. mic. Like I can scream and I can control a crowd and tell motherfuckers what to do and they going to hear me. Like my voice here is so much different from my show voice. And I think like you guys yeah, got I to know. see that. Yeah, for sure. Like it's totally different. For sure. And I think that he just respected that. And I think he saw like, I knew the music and I was someone who was there from day one. And he was like, I trust you with this job. It's a very important job and I trust you with it. So you fucking up is like, you're really blowing it. Cause I'm really, he was like that with everyone. He's like, I'm, I'm all in on you, bro. So you fuck up, it's your ass. I really like, I'm dead ass serious. He was really like that. Like he would be like, I love you so much. Like, like no homo, like if, if this is the last thing I got or like last, like the bed, we all sleeping on this bed, all 16 of us piled up. Like, I don't give a damn. We together. And I think that that comes from him needing the feeling of family and, and wanting to be close to people more. And I'm just like, at this show, I, f I fucked up and I didn't have a song. And, and he was just like, like the fans were like, oh, I want to hear it. You know, like they're like, fuck. And he's like, Yo, don't say shit to him. Like, he's good. I, my bad. I didn't tell him that I wanted to play this song today. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, yo, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> I'm really like, who the fuck is, who are you right now? And I'm just like, like that show, there's a lot of, like I have videos from it and like I, I look back on that and I'm like, I just genuinely was so happy and he was so happy. And like, like at that time, him and Ski, like, I think Ski was in New York and like, it was a little bit after like their disagreements on mm -hmm. stuff. They kind of like separated a little bit. And like, he called Ski and like played one of his songs and just like held the phone. I think I called Ski, but he took my phone and, and he was like, just like, that's it. Like you're, this is you here. And like, it's just like, bro, it was like something nice to see like him and his mom and him hugging his mom and like kissing her on the cheek and like him being with his girl. And like, it was just like a beautiful thing. And then like, he told me shortly after that, like, he's like, yo, she's pregnant. I'm having a kid. He's like, you an uncle. And I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, this we, this is a whole family now. And we about to go on tour in Europe. Like, he's getting like half a mil a show in Europe to go fucking Damn. play some festival in Russia, like close Damn. it out. Yeah, like this is like, he prided himself off of being like so exclusive that like when he was ready to come back out, it was like, I need that half M. I need 350, 400. If I ain't getting that, I ain't pulling up. Y'all ain't going to get me. So he created that much of a demand for him that it was like, okay, we ready. Let's go out there. We're going to do it. And he's like, yo, bro, like I'm poor as fuck at this point. And he's like, yo, bro, like you, we really, you really about to start getting paid and really start about that. Like all this shit's about to really happen. And then one day fucking he gets killed. 
And it's just like, like, for me personally, it was like, I had taken a lot from him where it was like, as much as, like, I give myself to my friends too. I give my, like, every piece of me to my family and my friends. So at that point, I had, I was all in. <laughs> like, I'm all in here. I'm, I just, like, I left Tallahassee. Me and my girl were living up there. I left. I'm like, we back down here. This is it. Like, this is what I got. And, like, he just was killed. Like, some random people, like, took him from me. And I'm just like, like, I, I was, I still remember that day, like, a bad nightmare. Like, I'm, like, chilling at my girl's house. And a, this is actually how I found out. So, a kid hit me up who his father, I guess, owned Riva. Is the manager there. And he sends me, like, pictures of, like, the I-8, the door open. And you can't see much. And there's, like, no cops there. And he's like, my dad just sent me this, said that X got shot. And I'm like, I'm like, what, what, like? What 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 do you mean? I'm like like, I don't, honestly I probably don't, I could probably even find the DMs with that kid if the kid DM me right now, but I try not to like I, I I'm gonna keep it real. I don't even look at that video. I don't look at pictures. I do not do not even if you're watching this, don't even send me that shit. And if you do, fuck you. I'm gonna block your stupid ass. Don't bother me with that shit because it fucked me up. But yeah, like I just remember that moment of like finding out and like I just called Ski. First thing I did was I'm just call Ski. I gotta call Ski. I'm like yo, he got shot. He ain't dead, but he got shot. And um, I'm getting updates, like, from his girl, um, who's, like, my childhood best friend. And, like, she's just like, yo, he going to be all right. He on the way to the hospital, all this shit, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I don't know. It's just a lot, you know? So, I, like, I even, at that point, I got, we got locked out of my homie's car at Chick-fil-A. Like, I don't even, I, I don't even know how. It was just, like, the worst day ever. So, I, I just remember, like, finding out the news when I found out, like, they tried to bring him back a bunch of times and he kind of, you know, was coming back and, and he just didn't make it. I was just like, I just laid down. I remember laying down. I was like in the mulch at the Chick-fil-A on 441 in their parking lot. And I was just laying down in the mulch. I was just laying down and I was just like crying. And I was just like looking up at the sky. Like I was just like begging. I'm like, this is, this is like, nah. Like I'm like, this shit ain't, this ain't it. And like, I still don't think that like, like that that day was just it was just so weird for me like unreal like and I still think to this day I'm like when am I going to wake up and he going to be here you know but I'm just like man it was just like at the point where everything was good and you thought everything was good it's like you never really do know and it's just like I think that his whole thing what is it like when you die for something is like a martyr is that what it's called yeah mm -hmm. I feel like he's like that a lot like he died for a lot of people. And it was just like, you gotta be understanding of being able to change. I think that that is, nowadays, it is, I cannot stress it enough. Like that's my whole thing. My only two thing is like, create what you love and like be open to change. Yeah.